Good evening, everyone. To provide for the safety of those attending this meeting, I want to give the following instructions in case of an emergency. If an emergency arises that prompts us to evacuate, I ask that everyone act, exit this room in a quick and orderly manner through one of the two doors on your right. Then proceed to the nearest stairwell, directions to which are indicated by exit signs. Once you exit the building, we ask that you, you safely cross the street into either of our parking lots um, to be safely away from the building. Our staff will help provide direction and assistance. In the case of a tornado warning, we ask that you exit this room to the hallway where we will remain uh, until it is safe to exit. In the event of an active shooter in the building, we will run if there is an accessible path, try to evacuate the premises, hide if you can't evacuate, find a place to hide where you're less likely to be found, lock any doors that you can. Fight as a last resort and only if your life is in immediate danger. Our staff will provide assistance on what to do. Thank you for your attention. Staff will be right in too. <laughs> At this time, Robert, I have to do a little prayer. Enjoy God, our Father, we give thanks for the blessings of a new day. Thank you for the blessings of being able to share together and enjoy us and be glad that we have your special blessing of our El Paso, Texas, and Dayton, Ohio. Help us to realize and recognize it could happen here. Yes. But as we join together, keep the force of love and blessings to each other. Yes. We ask that you bless us in every way possible. In Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to see Mr. Kevin Anderson, one of our former county commissioners. Please raise your hand, Mr. Anderson. We try to uh, at least recognize the past elected officials. I think I saw Mr. Oprah Wooder come in. Please raise your hand. Um, Councilman, any other elected officials? Moving on. Um, next agenda item. Minutes from our previous meeting. Um, if there are no additions or corrections, is there a motion? So moved. Second. Questions? All in favor, there being nobody voting, say aye. 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 All opposed? Hearing none, it is approved. Next is a, uh, a public hearing is called to all to receive citizen comments and questions relative to the community development block grant infrastructure project closed out. At this time, I'd like to call the public hearing to order. Mr. Peters, would you please read the public notice? Yes, sir. Notice is hereby given that the Edgecombe County Board of Commissioners will hold a public hearing on Monday, August 5th, 2019 at 7 p.m. in the commissioner's room on the second floor of the Edgecombe County Administration Building located at 201 St. Andrew Street, Harborough, North Carolina, 27886. The purpose of this public hearing is to remove, review, and assess the performance of the county's FY14 Community Development Block Grant Infrastructure, CDBGI, a project for the sewer to sound speed and allow residents an opportunity to express their views. The total project budget includes approximately 2.98 million CDBGI funds, 66% of the total project costs, from the North Carolina Development Department of Environmental Quality, DEQ, Division of Water Infrastructure, DWI, approximately 1.54 million of USDA Rural Development Grant and Loan Funds and County Funds. With these funds, the county extended sanitary sewer to low and moderate income LMI households in the town of Speed and vicinity to prevent health and environmental issues related to the failing septic tank. All activities are now complete and the county is in the process of closing the this, this project installed approximately 13,500 linear feet of 8 to 12 inch gravity sewer lines, 48 manholes, 41,300 linear feet of 6 inch force main, 55 sewer service lateral connections, 28 CDG funded, 3 new pump stations, and rehabilitation of one pump station. Persons having any questions concerning the CDBG program are urged to attend the public hearing, make their views known, and submit oral written comments prior to the submission of closeout information to DWI. There will also be a short presentation on fair housing as it pertains to CDBG projects. A public information file exists, the county administration building, and the assistant county manager's office, and will be viewed upon request. For 
additional information or to submit written comments, please contact Frankie Mungo, clerk to the board, at the Edgecombe County Administration Building, PO Box 10, 201 St. Andrews Street, Carter, North Carolina, 37886. Phone number 252-641-7834. Facts 252-641-0456. Comments should be postponed no later than August 9th, 2019. A written response will be made within 10 business days. The county does not discriminate based on race, color, religion, sex, national origin, human capital, familial status, human mission, access to treatment or employment in the CGBG program and activity. Non English speaking persons and persons with disabilities or who otherwise require special accommodations should contact Randy Mundo, clerk to the board, 252 641 7834 or 1 800 735 2962 or relay service at 711 at least 48 hours prior to the schedule. This information is available in Spanish or any other language upon request. Please contact the administration 252 641 7834 or box 10 201 Andrew Street, Harbor, North Carolina 27886 for accommodation for this request. Any witness, Chairman? Comments, Mr. Evans? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as uh, Mr. Peters uh, noted in the public notice, this is regarding the close out infrastructure project for the town of Speed and vicinity. This is what we refer to as phase one of the project that includes both USDA rural development funds as well as community development block grant funds. So, in particular, this is close out for the CDBG portion of it. Uh, before you open up the public hearing, I would uh, ask that you allow Mr. Will Larson, who is with the Wooten Company, who is going to come and provide us some information regarding fair housing. with the Wooten Company. Uh, if you will please bear with me. I uh, do have three pages that I'm required to read, um, as Mr. Peters just stated, uh, some of which will be repeats, uh, but it is a requirement as part of the closeout process. So uh, if we'll settle in, I'll get one as quickly as we can. Uh, for Edgecombe County, fiscal year 2014, Community Development Block Grant Infrastructure Program, also known as CDBGI. Sewer to town with speed and vicinity, the public hearing for, for project closeout. The purpose of the hearing. The purpose of the public hearing is to discuss the program performance for the fiscal year 2014 Community Development Block Grant Infrastructure Project for the Sewer System Improvements Project and allow residents an opportunity to express their views. In December 2014, the county was awarded CDBGI funds from NC Department of Environmental Quality, Division of Water Infrastructure. Approximately 2.81 billion USDA rural development grant and loan funds were committed, as well as county funds. The August 2016 amendment reduced the scope of the project, as well as reduced USDA and county funds committed. County funds are used to cover administrative costs not covered by CBGI. The final budget includes CBGI 2.981 million USDA rural development 1.523 million county. 15,000 for a total of 4.52 million. With these funds, the county extended public sewer service to low and moderate income households to prevent public and environmental health issues related to failing septic tank systems. The health department conducted surveys and concluded that many septic systems were failing and properties are not large enough for repair or rebuilding of these systems. If improvements were not made, septic tanks would continue to fail, environmental conditions would worsen, and families may have to be relocated. This CDBG uh, grant allowed the county to provide utility services to areas in need of assistance. In the August 2016 amendment prior to construction, the proposed project scope included the installation of 41,450 linear feet of force money, 13,850 linear feet of gravity sewer, Five change orders were needed throughout construction. The first was to clarify measurements at three pump stations. The second adjusted the linear feet of uh, horizontally directional drill extensions. Also included relocation of Highway 122 pump station at Fairfield Drive. Change order number three adjusted four jack measurements based on standing on one side of the road, electrical service modifications to two pump stations. Change order number four. I include the force main pivot and wet well bypass. Meters and valves at 
two conversations. And finally, change order number five include the final adjusted quantities. After adjusting final quantities, the final project scope includes installation of approximately 41,750 <coughs> linear feet of 6 inch floor plane, 13,540 linear feet of 8 to 12 inch gravity sewer, 49 manholes, 65 sewer service lateral connections, 28 of which were CDG I funded, three new pump stations, and rehabilitation of one pump station. Sewer improvements generally occur within the town of Speed, NC Highway 122, U.S. Highway 258, and connect to the town of Princeville, which is now Edgecombe Sewer, Water and Sewer District Number 6. Most work occurs within existing public right-of-ways, but easements were needed. 28 LMI households were provided new sewer connections paid with CPGI funds. Any other new sewer service connections were funded by USDA rule development. Projects Project delays were attributed to a reduction in project scope due to CPGI regulations regarding floodways and LMI verification of project area residents. Hurricanes Matthew and Florence. Electrical service, access to pump stations, and access to properties. The state monitored the project paperwork twice for compliance. At the June 2019 monitoring, one finding, which was a violation, was noted as not being able to locate a newspaper affidavit for procurement. Other findings were not having commitments from full property owners to maintain affordable rents for one year after closeout. Citizen comments. Comments should be postmarked no later than August 9th, 2019, and a written response will be made within 10 business days. Public grant documents are available upon request between the hours of 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. at the County Administration Building in the Assistant County Manager's Office. For additional information or to submit written comments, please contact Franchi Mungo, Clerk to the Board, Edgecombe County Administration Building, PO Box 10, 201 St. Andrew Street, Tarboro, North Carolina, 27866. Phone number 252-641-7834 or fax number 252-641-0456. This information is available in Spanish or any other language upon request. Please contact County Administration at 252-641-7834 or PO Box 10, 201 St. Andrew Street, Tarboro, North Carolina, 27886 for accommodations for this request. The second document uh, that we are required to read tonight is the um, the fair housing uh, uh, fair housing statement. Uh, it is much shorter, so uh, we're almost there. Uh, to the Edgecombe County Board of Commissioners from the Wooden Company, date of August 5th, 2019, the CDBG Fair Housing. As a recipient of the federal funds, the county must demonstrate efforts to affirmatively further fair housing. The Federal Fair Housing Act of 1968 prohibits the denial of housing to a person based on the person's membership in one or more of the protected classes. It is also illegal to coerce, intimidate, threaten, or interfere with a person seeking to exercise rights under the Fair Housing Act. Protected classes are race, color, religion, national origin, sex, familial status, disability, or handicap. It is illegal to demonstrate against a person in the provision of housing because of the per person's membership in a protected class in the following situations. The advertising, terms, conditions, privileges, financing, or provision of services or facilities in connection with the sale or rental of most housing. The provision of reasonable modification to a dwelling for persons with a disability at their expense when necessary for the full use and enjoyment of the dwelling. The provision of reasonable accommodations to the rules, policies, practices, and services when necessary to provide persons with a disability the equal opportunity to use and enjoy the dwelling. Compliant procedure. Any person or persons wishing to file a complaint of housing discrimination in the county may do so by informing the county manager at PO Box 10, 201 St. Andrew Street, Tarboro, North Carolina, 27886. Phone number 252-641-7803. Also toll free at 1-800-735-2962, extension 711. The county shall acknowledge the complaint within 10 days in writing and inform NCDEQ and the North Carolina Human Relations Commission about the complaint. 
the county shall offer assistance to NCHRC in the investigation and reconciliation of all housing discrimination complaints. For more information, HUD Office of Fair Housing and Equal Opportunity at 1-800-440-8099, NCHRC at 919-807-4424, or Legal Aid of North Carolina at 855-797-FAIR, which is 3247, for individual assistance. I do appreciate your patience, and um, that is the two public statements that have to be read. Any questions? Questions? Yes, you mentioned uh, the finding of the affordable housing, the finding in the compliance. There was a, a one notice, uh, a violation that dealt with sort of the paperwork uh, with the CPG. It was just a paperwork. Yes, sir. There was one affidavit that was missing at the time of the monitoring that, that has since been rectified. Okay. Yes, sir. Any other questions? <coughs> All right. Thank, thank you very thank much. Thank you. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, I call for public input. If there's anybody who'd like to speak, please come forward and state your name and address for the public record. Is there anybody to speak? Hearing none. I'd like to join the public hearing, and the recommendation is to approve this day of motion. So moved. Sorry. Question? All in favor, let it be known by the room say aye. Aye. All opposed? <coughs> hearing none, it is approved. Mr. Williams, if I could just note here, uh, one of the closeout requirements, and we do have to have this project closed out by the end of this month, is to have the public hearing as you've done tonight, and then have the board to approve the minutes from that public hearing, as you know which normally would only happen now at your September meeting. So I would uh, like to ask you to consider us having a call meeting before the end of August um, so that you can come back and approve the minutes from a particular, well, the whole meeting, but in particular for the public here. Um, and there may be some other business items we'll have at that time. You don't have to sit there right now. I'm sitting there. Thank you. Put these minutes together for this public meeting. <laughs> We could do it at the end of this week. Go ahead. Yeah, is that possible? Can okay. we do the minutes for this, what we just had? Of the public hearing portion of it? Uh, we have to recess for some time to give uh, Ms. Mobile an opportunity to do that. Good enough. Okay. I'm not putting no, I'm putting no pressure on it. Okay. Okay. He just cleaned it up. Well. Okay. Uh, uh, at this time, schedule appointment. Um, go ahead, Ms. Edge. Service Wiggins. First, we have Mr. Jim Rand of the Phoenix Historical Society, who's going to provide updates on uh, some of their activities. While Mr. Wren is making his way to the podium, I do want to point out you do have some information that he provided that is in your packet, some of which he made reference during his presentation. Go ahead, Mr. Wren. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. So glad to be here. My name is Jim Wren. I'm the vice president of the Phoenix Historical Society. Have our president Mavis Smith and all the members of the Historical Society. We want to uh, thank the board for continuing to support our work to, to recover, record, and promote the unique history of Edgecombe County as experienced by members of the African American community. Um, first thing I would like to do is announce to you that I um, invite you on September 7th to pass it around. Uh, we'll be unveiling uh, uh, North Line Highway Historical Marker in Rocky Mountain uh, that recognizes the 1978 Sanitation Workers Strike. This will be um, the seventh North Line Highway Historical Marker that has been uh, succeeded by the Phoenix Historical Society. And we think it's important for the community history and uh, we look forward to having a, uh, a good event there. September 7th, <coughs> Center in Rocky Mountain. In addition, we'd like to uh, take this opportunity to share with the board some of the history that we have developed. And with each member can get a copy. This is our basic pamphlet of uh, African Americans in Edgecombe County from slavery to freedom in Jim Crow, 1860 to 1901. There's a copy of each member of the board there. In the, uh, County manager, and uh, particularly want to highlight in terms of uh, the history, the origin of the uh, the moving of the county line, the Nash Edgecombe County line, the railroad track in 1871. It becomes 
uh, has been controversial and continues to come up as an issue in our uh, in this area. Um, but people don't know why, how it came to be at the railroad track. Um, we'll briefly to say that in 1860, at the time of the Civil War, Hitchcomb County was one of the most wealthiest counties in North Carolina, primarily because of the cotton production. And uh, there was over 10,000 enslaved Africans who were picking that cotton. It was a labor that, that helped make this wealth. Uh, Rocky Mountain Mills was the largest uh, taxpayer in Edgecombe County helping produce the, the cotton, and then the, the railroad, the Wounded well, the Railroad, <coughs> was developed by Edgecombe planters to transport <coughs> cotton to the forts in Wilmington. After the Civil War, the emancipation from slavery in 1868, the Constitution, African Americans had the right to vote, and um, many were elected to office in this state, including right here Henry Cherry, who lived across the street from this building, uh, was the first African American elected to. North Carolina House of Representatives, as well as Richard M. Johnson, first African American elected to the Edgecombe County Board of Commissioners. So across the state in 1868, there was much progress for African Americans and the rights of, of all people. Uh, but in 1870, in retaliation to that progress, the former slave owners organized a statewide campaign of terror through the Ku Klux Klan. And, uh, over the governor, uh, over 240 acts of uh, Klan attacks in Oklahoma were later documented by Congress, and Governor uh, William Holder called the militia to uh, stop the Klan attacks. And over 100 suspected Klans were arrested by the militia. Um, the North Carolina Grand Dragon, who was Klan during this time, was identified as former Confederate Colonel William L. Saunders, who is buried in the Calvary Episcopal Church here in Harvard. <coughs> Following the, uh, this uh, wave of terror, intimidating people at the polls, a, uh, a conservative uh, Democrats won back the majority of General Assembly from uh, the, one, the people who were elected in 1868 and began to uh, put in place the impeachment of Governor Holy, um, which was the only time the governor had been removed from Oklahoma history. Um, and let me, the same General Assembly who was part of this, who was elected as part of the retaliation to the gains of, of, of Reconstruction, the same uh, General Assembly that removed Governor Holden began to change the boundaries of electoral units to reduce African American representation according to the black legislators of 1871. In February 1871, the North Carolina Senate passed a bill moving the Nash Edgecombe boundary several miles east to the Wilmington and Weldon Railroad track. This divided Edgecombe County towns of Whitakers, Battleboro, Rocky Mount, and Sharpsburg into two counties and transferred voters from majority black Edgecombe County, which had elected African Americans to office into majority white Nash County, which had never elected African Americans. This move also took away half of Edgecombe County's tax revenue from the railroad <coughs> and placed Rocky Mountain Mills, Edgecombe's major industry and top taxpayer, into Nash County. Both the railroad and the mill were important to market Edgecombe's cotton, still picked by black hands who now could elect black and white Republicans into office in Edgecombe County. But 11,520 acres of land was taken from Edgecombe and given to Nash for a total sum of $800. The Edgecombe County Board of Commissioners at that time, which you all were the predecessors, I mean the descendants of that board, <laughs> resolved, quote, there is a scheme afoot in the legislature to change the county line between Edgecombe and Nash. The passage of such bill be very unjust on a large portion of the people of this county and ordered our senator and representatives to use all influence against the passage of such a bill. Even lead, leading elite white Democrats like Judge George Howard opposed this move 
according to the Togra Sub, which called it, quote, a savage move of which the entire people of Edgecombe condemned with scarcely a dissenting vote. Over 500 Edgecombe citizens signed a petition of protest to the North Carolina House of Representatives, which stated, quote, never in the history of legislation was an act attempted to be done which would do so much injustice to a people as that proposed in the bill under consideration if consummated, respectfully and prayerfully submitted by the people of Edgecombe County, as according to the county <coughs> and the Daily Sun. Black State Senators Henry Epps of Halifax County, George Price of New Hanover County, and John Hyman of Warren County opposed this bill, saying, it will sever and divide the precincts, townships, and incorporated towns to which the railroad runs. It will create confusion and dissension among the people in that there is more than 1,000 miles of railroad running through different sections of North Carolina, and yet there is not another single mile of railroad in the state that has made a dividing line between two counties. And the Senate, by a direct vote, positively refused to allow the question of the transfer to be submitted to the qualified voters who are thus transferred from one county to another like stock or dumb beast upon a farm. So that's some of the background of how this kind of mind changed. In, in your uh, packet, uh, our research has developed a map and of Nash County with the, the yellow mark is the, is the part of Nash County that was formerly Edgecombe. And uh, in explaining to people why is Edgecombe's county tax rate so much higher than Nash County's? Because in this territory here, you have a lot of all these corporate taxes going to Nash County, and they've benefited from the last 148 years. And that's through this this uh, this move, and, and you see what the, it was opposed by Edgecombe County. So it, you've got all this industry, for instance. You got Cummins, you got Pfizer, you got um, all this was visited in Edgecombe County, except for this unjust act that happened in 1871 as a retaliation to Reconstruction and to, to the people of Edgecombe County. You see, you see this is a, you can see this map here. This is where the county line used to be. Um, so everything to the uh, we ran to the falls. And then, um, you can see it superposed on the map today. So that's where the county line uh, was before 1871. And um, uh, this, we're, 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 the Phoenix Society is having a, an educational program in November where we're having a, a UNC scholar named Lucas Kelly going to uh, speak with more research on this. But it continues to be an issue, and Nash County continues to uh, find ways to be on Edgecombe County, and they want money. And, and, and this issue about how how uh, wealth was taken from Edgecombe County in retaliation of Reconstruction, and uh, Edgecombe has suffered in in this way, uh, everything would be a lot more equal, and the county line stayed the same, except for this. Uh, this act of, uh, as the people of the time call it, uh, a great injustice to people of County. And people don't uh, really know that. Any questions? Did, did I hear you say something about an elected official for the county commissioners back in the day, for a black county commission? Yeah, Richard M. Johnson was elected in 1868 county commissioner, and then Jack Nance was elected in 1870. He did Alvarez County Commissioner. You know, during that time period. Yeah. I'm saying, Edgecombe has been a majority of Alvarez County since during the time of slavery. And when when freedom came to people, they could vote and, uh, and, and elect people like yourselves to, to uh, office. And it was one of the wealthiest counties in North Carolina. 
but there was a retaliation came because some people didn't didn't like that in order to, and take to undercut that and take some wealth around. This is why the Carolinas moved to 1871, and we continue to have issues to this day about that county line, about Nash and Edgecombe, and and uh, Edgecombe been a disadvantage since 1871, but the thing is gone is is gone the other way. So you're <laughs> well, it was changed. Edgecombe was wealthy, and then when the African American majority became uh, let be able to take officers to this wealthy county, there were elements that didn't like that and put in place to try to move the county line and take wealth. When you move Rocky Mountain Mills out of Edgecombe into Nash County, that was a big. Uh, I mean, your county needs tax revenue, right? To do to serve the people. But still, nothing has changed. No. <laughs> still do it now. What I'm saying is, That's what, what I'm saying, saying is that the commissioners need to maybe have to try to educate people so they know that there was injustice done in 1871, and that's part of why the imbalance is. So that that's part of uh, you know something to be aware of. I'm not, I'm not. You got a question? <laughs> No, did, you, did you want to show where? Huh? Okay, it's on the railroad. That's where it ran. As you can see, Rocky Mountain Mills was in Edgecombe County. And um, it cut right through there. Um, you know, all the Whitakers, Battleburg, Edgecombe County, Sharpsburg, um, and all the industry that's developed over the last 148 years on the west side of the track would have been given taxes to Edgecombe, but we haven't had that benefit because of how this line was changed in 1871. Well, I'd just like to say, um, first of all, I'd like to thank you and the Phoenix Historical Society because I go to a lot of their sessions and, and it's really given me quite uh, a lesson in history as it relates to our county. And, and uh, they're real interesting sessions. And I would suggest to anybody in the community, um, when they, if you know about them, um, attend them. Because it's, it's just so much history in our county that, that even those of us that are African American don't know about us as related to the building of this county. But I encourage all of our citizens to, to attend if they can, because they are, they are very interesting sessions and they do have researchers from local researchers and many researchers from ECU and our state universities that assist them with this uh, research and it's uh, I just encourage you to support this organization and to, to attend this session. Thank you, Mr. I just say so when you go back to further negotiations with Nash County Commissioners and the school board and stuff around money for schools put this on the table. You know, where we've been for the last 148 years if, if, if we had that land and that tax revenue in Tacoma County. And we will. <laughs> <laughs> next up. Thank you so much. So next on the agenda, I'd like to uh, call Mr. Art Bradley to the podium. He's our Cross Extension Director, and he's going to introduce to us tonight our 48 Youth and Boys Festival. Good evening, Commissioners. I'm Art Bradley, County Extension Director here in Edgecombe County. Um, I'm happy to be here tonight, and on behalf of the Edgecombe County 4-H program, uh, for the past 10 years, the North Carolina Association of County uh, Commissioners have encouraged and supported youth development opportunity at your annual meeting, and that involves a 4 h from every county and a uh, representative from the Boys and Girls Club, one from each organization. So this year our 4 h representative will be Mallory Lancaster, and she will attend the event on August 23rd and 24th. So at that, uh, their activities will include a training which helps them recognize their strengths and how they can work and communicate with other people who have strengths in other areas. This uh, she'll also participate in a simulation game called Bottom Line, 
This simulation will allow them to sit in your seat as commissioner and determine the priorities for their county and how funding will be allocated or not. Uh, they will also have breakfast with any of you who may be attending the meeting on that Saturday morning. So we're excited that Mallory will be attending you boys as our Edgecombe County representative. And I'm going to let Mallory tell you a little bit about her show. <coughs>
he'll, he'll put whatever he's recommending on that on that agenda. Thank you very much.
I've got um, something, some statistics to share with you. You guys typically know, but I'm sharing a printout and showing you what is all done in our office. Um, we did, we had 24 filings of bankruptcy totaling $40,068.98. That negatively impacts our office. Um, we issued 166 payment plans. We turned in 744 new debts to the state, totaling $9,303.11 what we collected. We, the, the total amount of the debt was $22,652. So we got not quite half of that back. We did 1,753 garnishments. And that is not very easy when you go taking people's money out of their paper out of their bank accounts and their paychecks. Um, we did 36 sheriff executions. And I'd like to thank the sheriff's office for helping collect that amount of $22,652, or $51, excuse me, $52.51. Um, and then our aggressive foreclosure proceedings. This past year, you guys made the decision to um, bring Mr. Peters on as our county attorney. And so we were able to only submit a, a fewer amounts to our previous contractor, Ms. Boyette, of 36 parcels. That was owing $963,000. She had, um, helped assist collect $22,650 out of that. Mr. Peters, since he has been on staff with us, we've submitted 297 parcels to his office, owing $1.2 million. And we've collected already, as of June 30, $404,000 with his assistance. And so those are some things that our office does. And we'd like to thank you guys for you know, continuing your support of us. And I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. So we collected $1.2 million of back taxes this year for the prior 10 years. Yes, sir. And we charge interest. On those? Yes, sir. It was accruing every year? Every month. Every so month. it's 9% a year. Um, if it is on for every year, every month, it's 0.75%, so it's 9% a year. Do we set that interest rate? The state sets that. The state does. I was just curious what the actual what we What the actual levy is versus what was interest paid. Right. I could um, get that information for you. That's okay. I just was curious if it was interest included. Okay. On our write offs, at the top where we wrote off um, 198000 that is principal only. That is not including interest, so I did report that without interest owing. When we do our annual budget, do we factor in that we may collect $1.2 million in back taxes? We are usually a little bit more conservative than that, just to give ourselves a premium. <laughs> but we do factor in, we budget collecting previous years. So. Thank you. Another question? I don't have a question, but I have a comment. I had to call the tax office this past week and talk to a couple of ladies, and I was absolutely thrilled at the help that they gave me. Thank you. The way they did it and the manner they conducted themselves. And, and I told the ladies on the phone, I really appreciate what y'all did. I appreciate that. Yes, sir. Another question. All comment. Here and now, would there be two motions? The first motion is to approve the tax collector seller ban as of June 30, 2009. Change subject to the independent audit. Is that a motion? So moved. Yeah. Questions? All in favor, let it be known by the vote sign aye. Aye. All opposed? Hearing none, it is approved. The next motion is to recharge the tax collector with the outstanding taxes and the responsibility for collecting the same for the years 2009. Through 2019, is the motion? Yes, Questions? All in favor, let it be no matter what, sign aye. Aye. All opposed? Hearing none. Thank you for an excellent year. Thank you, and the staff, Thank you. for the work that you do. Thank you, Mr. Peters, also. <laughs> At this time, ladies and gentlemen, um, we have put a petition. If there's anybody here that would like to speak to the board, would you please come forward and state your name and address for the public record? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
I have other obligations I need to accommodate. If there's another time when you would like for me to have a more complete presentation, I'd be honored to have that scheduled for a future meeting. My name is Holly, and my husband died by suicide in January 2016. Losing a loved one to suicide is compared to a grenade being flung into a family unit. Suicide has been described as a death like no other, and it truly is. Death by suicide stuns with soul crushing surprise, leaving family and friends not only grieving the unexpected death, but confused and lost by this haunting loss. Despite science is supporting a basis for mental health illness, suicide is still shrouded by stigma. Much of the public believes that death by suicide is shameful and sinful. Others can consider it a choice that was made and blame family members for its outcome. Some people are unsure how to reach out to and support those who have lost a loved one to suicide, so simply avoid the situation. It is important to note the structure of grief for suicide survivors of loss is extremely complicated. Please consider these facts. Suicide is the tenth leading cause of death in the United States. Every 40 seconds, someone dies by suicide, leaving six to eight loved ones grieving a devastated loss. Adult loss survivors are nearly 10 times more likely to consider suicide themselves in the initial months following loss. Suicide claims the lives of our military vets at the rate of 22 a day. Farmers are taking their lives at five times the rate of the population. Death by suicide has no social, economic, or <coughs> boundaries. I've learned myself to adjust my terminology. The word committed implies a crime, a deed performed in malice. Died by suicide or took his or her life gives the power of words that these broken souls were taken by an evil force. On September 7th, there is a Tri-County Suicide Awareness Walk that will be held at Pine Tops. It is so important for this walk to be successful and become an annual event for this community. I've got some more handouts here for you if you would. What Mr. Evans is handing out is walk literature, and I ask you to give it to all imaginable avenues, churches, business friends, and family. I invite you to come out on September 7th. Walk with us, fellowship, and participate. Help show this community we stand united in suicide awareness. I introduce myself as a widow by suicide. I close this talk to you because I am also a suicide loss survivor. Let's make this a strong and impactful event. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for coming. Please, Mr. Evans, prepare some type of resolution of support for this effort to do what we can to help support this, this effort, okay? Because I think it, it was just a learning process for me in terms of the way it was explained. Um, so I think the board would support this. Is there anybody else? Here to speak. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Councilwoman Deborah Jordan. I live at 614 East Wilkes Street in Tarboro. I stand before you because I came early this year asking your support for Special Olympics. Well, we have formed a committee. Um, and I have to say that I'm excited about it. And we are meeting August the 15th with the EC PS Director of EC, Tarboro Parks and Rec, Tarboro City Manager, Edgecombe County Manager, or oh, uh, <laughs> to plan which when we'll go on with the Special Olympics and a possible coordinator for our EC PS students and, and community. And then after that, I chose to come today so you will be aware that it will be scheduled for August the 15th. And maybe Mr. Evans will report back in September to you all. So I feel solicit your support as we move along. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else to speak up other petitions? Good evening. My name is Kimbo Snack, the second. Address is 
127 Midway Lane, Tarboro, North Carolina. My mailing address is P.O. Box 1391, Pine Talk, North Carolina. I live three miles out of Pine Talk, seven miles out of Tarboro, but I got a address. But um, I just want to say it was all in the paper this week about um, my services uh, video. You were on meetings, and uh, um, Brother Evans uh, responded to it. I had received a phone call from the telegram. <laughs> So I just want to let you know I have no problem with video on the meetings. Even if you all start the video, I'm, I'm still going to video it because the public can do it. And I have 5,000 followers on my blog and, and more than that that read it, uh, that I read my blog and look at my videos on YouTube. So no matter what, if you all st uh, start recording the meetings, I'm still going to record it for my purposes so I can share it with folks. So I just want to let you know, whatever y'all do, <coughs> it, it is on the me. Uh, whether you video up or not, but the newspaper they call me, and I told them I had no problem with what you all do. Same thing with Rocky Mountain City Council, I'll be over there too. Uh, whatever y'all do, y'all do y'all think I'm gonna do my thing because I'm gonna make sure the people that can't be here, I sacrifice to be here, but I'm gonna make sure people that can't be here, they rely on me to provide you know, good information, and so I'm gonna make sure the newspaper gives you bits and pieces, but my videos don't lie. Appreciate it. And I don't think this board has an opposition from. Nobody that video. <laughs> so it, that can't continue. I don't know. We have not decided on anything that we're going to do anyway. So I don't know right. what the article's about. Okay. Any changes would have to come from this board. Uh, anybody else to speak at public petition? Hearing none. Moving on. Consideration of approved budget amendments. Is there anything we brought to our attention, Mr. Evans? I do want to point out a couple of things. Uh, 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 in your packet, <coughs> the very first one uh, has from myself, the manager, little funds to correct uh, GL account. Uh, I do want to point out, you'll notice this is for JCPC or Juvenile Crime Prevention Council funds. These are pass through funds from us. Uh, to these organizations that are recommended and ultimately, ultimately approved by this board to receive funds. You do provide us a match. I just want to show you that what this change is, that there was an organization that had previously received funds through JCPC. The program is called Resolve. Uh, it was not recommended that they receive uh, funding for this current fiscal year. Um, but instead, another organization, their program is called Who or We Have Options. And so we just needed to make a correction in our budget. Uh, it was uh, added in our budget that you had already approved a program for Resolve. So we're just changing that from Resolve to the We Have Options program. So there's no additional county funds to be uh, appropriated for that. Uh, if you turn from there, uh, one, two, uh, five pages from there. You'll see it is, uh, has Mr. William Johnson's name, Kevin Manor's office at the top. Um, you'll see it's funds for the Princeville project. I do want, I did notice that we actually have uh, this particular budget amendment is duplicated. Um, so I'll ask you for this one that would be uh, adding $20,000 to the budget for pre development costs to be disregarded. Uh, and if you turn from there to From there, uh, 10 pages from that page. I think you need to write down the page number. You need to also, so that the motion can reflect what you are uh, telling us not to. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, uh, rather than, uh, you probably need to give us the count numbers to delete from it. So that you don't want us to approve? Yes. Okay, go ahead. I okay. And so instead of the one I asked you to just uh, to disregard budget amendment, there's a second one you'll see for the principal sewer project. And, and what this is, just to let you know, you know we have um, funding uh, that's coming to us from uh, primarily USDA rural development to do basically a full rehab of the sewer system in District 6, which is in the town of Princeville. Um, we are just about at stage of bidding that out. Once that's bid out, we know the final number. That's when uh, USDA rural development will finalize the, the grant and loan amount. And so, but there is 
there are pre-development costs uh, that we appropriate for fund balance and then once that funding is finalized then we do a notice to reimburse or an intent to reimburse and we're reimbursed from proceeds of that uh, to the county so we do need to appropriate fifty thousand uh, dollars for those pre-development costs to get us to that point uh, beyond that i don't have any others i, I would point out but i'd be happy to answer any questions And based on all you just said, give me a motion. Yes, sir. So my recommendation would be to approve all of the uh, budget amendments as presented, <coughs> with the exception of the one that notes uh, $20,000 to be appropriated from fund balance to the Princeville project um, that's in your pack. Motion? To move. Second. Question? All in favor, that be known by vote sign aye. Aye. All opposed? Hearing none, it is approved. Um, next, move it on. Uh, next on the agenda is um, we have uh, received funds from FEMA, HMGP program for the elevation of properties in the town of Princeville. Uh, this is considered phase one of the Princeville elevation project, wherein 75 approved properties will be assessed for the feasibility of being elevated as a mitigation measure. The grant total is $1,125,000. Just to remind you, Town of Princeville, at their request, we're already administering uh, the rest of their HMGP programs. Uh, so I recommend that you accept this grant agreement by adopting the enclosed grant project ordinance and budget. Motion. Second. Question. All in favor, that you know, my vote sign aye. Aye. Uh, <coughs> opposed, hearing none, it is approved. Okay. Uh, item C is regarding a contract amendment for Kingsborough, contract amendment number three for Kingsborough project. Uh, as you know, we're working on developing infrastructure onto Kingsborough Industrial Park, including water and sewer extensions with funding from the Golden Leaf Foundation and North Carolina Department of Commerce under their Industrial Development Fund. We recently received additional grant funding to include extending infrastructure to the Kingsborough training facility, as well as to add a secondary water line to the Triangle Tire plant. The Wooten Company is currently under contract for engineering on this project. With the additional work, their contract needs to be amended. Therefore, included for your consideration is amendment number three, which will add $208,000 for engineering and construction administrative services. For a total not to exceed contract of one million one hundred and twenty-two thousand six hundred and sixty-seven dollars and fifteen cents. I recommend the approval of amendment number three to the contract with the Motion. Motion. Questions. All in favor that be known by the vote and sign aye. Aye. All opposed? Hearing none, there's approved. Next. Uh, item D is regarding uh, endorsing welcome signs for the town of Princeville. The town of Princeville has been working with faculty from North Carolina State University on multiple projects, one of which is developing welcome signs for the town. Enclosed, you will find the proposed signage. The North Carolina Department of Transportation requires that both the town and the county approve the proposed signs. Therefore, for your consideration is a resolution to endorse the signage project. The Princeville Board approved the project at their July 15th meeting. I recommend that you approve the resolution as presented. Motion. So moved. Second. Question. All in favor, let me know my vote sign aye. Aye. All opposed, hearing none, there's approved. Next. Item E. Um, we have implemented strategic improvements in our information technology policies and practices to be more efficient and to better protect our network. A key factor in protecting our network is the collective practices of our end users, which would be our employees. Ms. Tapka Summerlin, our Chief Information Officer, worked with the committee of staff members to develop the enclosed acceptable use policy. The goal of the policy is to protect the data shared and housed within our network. I recommend that you approve the attached acceptable use policy, which will be added to our personnel and administrative policy. I would like to rec uh, recognize uh, Ms. Summerlin, who I believe is here tonight. There she is. Oh, all right. So she's uh, put a lot of effort in this and lots of other things. I'm sure you've been seeing lots on the news lately about um, companies being hacked, but also some county governments being hacked. So she's been working very hard with her team, the committee she's working with, 
uh, trying to, as, as she and I often talk about, looking for where there are windows open and doors unlocked and make sure we close those windows and lock those doors. And so this is part of it. This is a new policy. This is a new policy. Our, our current personnel policy makes brief mention of uh, acceptable use. This will replace it. Any questions? Motion? Questions? All in favor, that would be number one side, aye. Aye. All opposed, hearing none, just approve. Consideration of approving the current county owner equipment as a plus. Is there a motion? Okay. Question. All in favor, that would be number one side, aye. aye. All opposed, hearing none, just approve. Next, Mr. Yes, sir, uh, we propose that the health department continues to provide school health services for Edgecombe County Schools. Annually, we review our agreement and then present for your approval. We will continue to provide eight school nurses who will administer the services described in the agreement. This is funded partially by a grant and the remainder by the school system. I recommend you approve the agreement with Edgecombe County School System as presented. Motion. Any questions? All in favor, let me know my vote sign aye. All opposed? Hearing none, it is approved. Next. Uh, item H, uh, the Proper Extension Office has been awarded $5,000 by the Biden Health Foundation through the Community Benefit and Health Initiatives Grant. The purpose of the grant is to improve the outreach of the FNEF for expanded foods and nutrition education program. FNEF uh, strives to improve nutrition and increase physical activity for limited resources, resource families. The county is to provide a $250 match to the project. That will be provided through funds already budgeted to park extension. I recommend that you accept this grant award by adopting your project ordinance and budget amendment that are attached. Motion. Second. Questions. All in favor, let me know my vote sign aye. aye. All opposed. Yeah, now it is approved. Next. Item I, which is a resolution to authorize electronic payments. Now, last year, you authorized electronic payments by way of your approval of our purchasing cards or key cards policy. These are used to simplify procurement for selected low dollar purchases. Uh, these have worked very well, and our department heads have followed the policy as approved. We do need to more formalize your authorization of these electronic payments by way of the attached resolution. I recommend that you approve the resolution as presented. Motion. Questions? All in favor, let me know by vote sign aye. aye. All opposed? Here, aye, yes, approved. Next. Uh, next on your agenda is regarding donation of lots to the town of Princeville. Uh, we own two vacant parcels in Princeville, which were acquired uh, through tax foreclosure. The lots are identified by parcel numbers 4738521757 and 4738521589. The town is interested in receiving these parcels for future use and public benefit to its citizens. North Carolina General Statutes allows the county to convey property to another local government unit. I recommend that you approve the attached resolution which will authorize the conveyance of the above mentioned properties to the town of Motion. So moved. Questions? All in favor, let me know by the vote sign aye. Aye. All opposed, hearing none. It is approved. Next. Item K is regarding change order number five for speed the sewer project. Uh, presented for your consideration is amendment to uh, amendment number five to the contract with Ralph Hodge Construction Company for the construction of a sewer collection system in and around the town of Speed. The changes are detailed in the attached document. This change order will result in an increase of $302,852.10, increasing the total contract price to $4,379,967.77. I recommend that you approve the contract amendment as presented and authorize the chairman to execute the sentence. Motion. So moved. Second. Second. Questions? All in favor, every number by voting time, aye. Aye. All opposed, hearing none, it is approved. Moving on. Item L, we have been selected to receive an additional appropriation of $70,000 from the North Carolina Housing Finance Agency for the urgent repair program. Um, this program we've administered several times, and so I recommend that you uh, 
uh, first approve the assistance and procurement policies, then take action to accept this grant award by adopting the project ordinance and budget amendment and authorizing me to uh, execute the funding agreement. So there would be two, uh, two, two motions, yes sir. First to approve the assistance and procurement policy. Motion. Second. Question. All in favor, that means no matter what side of the aye. Aye. All opposed, hearing none. Next motion. And to accept the grant by approving the project ordinance and budget amendment. Motion. Second. Second. Questions. All in favor, that be no matter what side of the aye. Aye. All opposed, hearing none. It is approved. Contracts for review and or approval. Anything to be brought to the board's attention? I do want to point out, you'll see that they are grouped by those that are under 50,000, which I am authorized to approve, and those over 50,000, I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. Any questions before I get a motion? If not, is there a motion to approve? Second? Sure. Questions? All in favor, let it be number one time, aye. aye. All opposed? Hearing none, it is approved. Alpha list and releases, anything for? Motion. Yes, motion to approve. Mm -hmm. Questions? All in favor, that be no matter what sign I. Department of Reports for Review. Um, anything you need to go right ahead. I would like to point out a couple of things. First, you, you have your usual report uh, in your packet um, from the Water and Sewer Department from Ms. Mike Matthews. Um, in addition to that, you have at your place. Um, a report you'll see at the top that says inactive water and, uh, and sewer accounts. Uh, I certainly won't read through that for you, but I, I do want to point out, um, so uh, what Mr. Matthews and his staff are doing is they are going back by district uh, because you know, we have over 4,000, 5,000 water customers, I believe. He's going back by district to see, try to identify any accounts for which they don't have an account set up but they will go back and read these meters to see if there's been any water usage. So, uh, you know, that can happen. Sometimes people will go in and, uh, and turn the water on themselves, and, you know, and we not regularly read that account because um, they don't have an account set up. So they're going through district by district um, to identify if there are any accounts um, that there's been some water usage and building these customers. So, I wanted you to be aware of it, you know, we, as, as he's been doing that, we, we've been getting some calls. It's, it's necessary for us to do this because this is, you know, uh, every gallon of water that comes to us, we have to pay for it and therefore we have to charge. And this, this is a part of the overall effort any of the staff are working on trying to improve uh, our water loss uh, issue. You see that before every month. Uh, so I just want to be clear. call that you get for us reading the meters that ain't nobody that's supposed to be there. Sir, <laughs> what kind of call would you get for reading a meter that's nobody's supposed to be in that house? Oh, we've gotten several calls already to say, you know, they don't understand how there was any water they didn't know, and, you know, our meter is wrong or something. But they, we have an account. Nobody's coming in. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. And sometimes it's, uh, sometimes it's a rental property, it might be miscommunication between the, the landlord and the tenant, the tenant moves in, and um, you know, transfer accounts or something, they never come in. It's, it's a number of different things, but what's important to us is identify water that's going through the meters that we, we should be charged. So that, that's a new report you just wanted to, to draw your attention. Anything else? On the department? Yes, sir. Um, item E under department reports, you'll see in there from, uh, from our planning department, um, Ms. Cynthia Jones, our planning director, has um, Give me some information to recognize Ms. Faustina Lynch, um, who we're very proud that she uh, represented the county and participated in the National Senior Games. She is uh, from the town of Canita, and I believe Ms. Lynch is here tonight. Would you like to stand up, Ms. Lynch? Please, please.
and we all citizens here in our department, but Ms. Um, Lynn, she has stuck here with us, and just getting to know her personally, she came to the office one day saying she's going to Aubrey, Aubrey, Turkey, New Mexico. And I said, are you going by yourself? And she said, yes. And I was really surprised at all the, the um, of senior games that she has participated in and represent Edge Home County. And I thought it was an honor to have someone as Miss Lynch uh, represent the Edge Home County. She has participated in state games, the local games, as well as going to New Mexico Flying Fighters. Wow. So as you see all her awards, and she did was one at the local, the state level. And she did participate recently in a couple of years. May. May in New, New Mexico by herself. So she has represented the county well and I want to present and show off someone that we've had the honor of working with getting to know her. So anytime she comes to our office, there's two. At the end of it, outside of our house and school, we try to sit down and take time to help her when we can help her. So she's a little special lady to us. So um, I do want to introduce, introduce her to y'all. Look, look like she brings life to that office. <laughs> <laughs> she does. She is, it has been a pleasure working with her. We, get some wonderful repairs, but we're going along with some repairs and also get to know our assistants. That's really important to us to get to know them on a personal level. And we have the opportunity to read articles in your, in your package. I did a mini interview with her and that's all the information she shared with us. So I tell you, I want to get to her. Anything you like to say? I would just like to say I'm honored. I'm honored that the county board would do such a thing for <laughs> well, we, we are more honored to have you as a citizen of this county, and um, and I don't fly by myself, I'm scared. <laughs> we are honored that you're a citizen of this county, okay? I got to hold somebody in. Go ahead, everybody. I just want to know who you're married. I'm not. I'm a widow. I am a widow. You don't have to answer. <laughs> and I've enjoyed. Um, I've enjoyed all of the games and the track running that I've done in the past years. And like Ms. John said, um, May, I achieved 17 medals in the local games here. I ran track over here in Carver. I ran in Rocky Mount and also the games that were played over in Wilson, North Carolina. I was uh, qualified in the games on uh, 2018, um, I got, I received um, approximately 21 medals in the local games 2018. I received uh, approximately 15 in the state games in Raleigh, Durham, and Clayton, North Carolina. That qualified me this year to go to the national games that were held out in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Wow. <laughs> I'm going to the Memphis. I'm going. give county the opportunity to uh, uh, to have 
an ordinance that could restrict that. And, and so at this point, um, I guess I would just recommend that we study that a little further. Um, but just wanted you to know we are having ongoing con conversation with the price and the sheriff about the situation. Any questions? So is the situation as volatile as it was? Um, well, I don't believe it's as volatile as it was, but he still has concern about some shooting that's going on. Right. You know, there's nothing legally that the sheriff can do. It's allowable when we have nothing in our ordinance that would restrict that. Certainly, if um, there's anything that took place that was uh, of immediate danger to someone, but you know, that's, we'll leave that to the sheriff and the staff to, to investigate that. You know, any questions from the letter? Hearing none, moving on. Item B, I just want to let you know we gave you permission at your last meeting to request to the town of Tarboron uh, regarding the National Guard Armory if they would be willing to turn over their ownership interest in that building. I have submitted that request. I believe I have a copy of my letter to the town manager uh, in your packet. I will be attending their board meeting on August the 19th to present that request. Uh, to the full board, so I will certainly report back to you um, after I uh, attend that meeting. Um, item G, um, regarding the timeline for solid waste permits, you'll remember in our, our budget preparation process we talked about um, allocating funds in the solid waste budget to go with a, a decal or a permitting system that will hopefully help to control um, outside of the county resident using our solid waste facilities, which they should not. Other counties are doing that. Uh, so I'd like to uh, invite Mr. William Johnson, our assistant county manager, who's working with Mr. Larry Moore, our solid waste director, and he's going to give you a brief overview of the timeline for implementing the project. Good evening, commissioners. Um, so as you all remember, we began talking about this last year. Um, and you, in your budget this year, we have approved uh, $20,000 to start this project. Um, over the last six weeks or so, I've been doing research and reaching out to a lot of different counties and municipalities that have similar systems to this. Um, and I plan to make a recommendation to Eric on how our system will run um, this month um, and for him to make a recommendation to you in September. Um, my plan currently is to have um, these permits mailed to our citizens around the end of uh, November, 1st of December, um, and then have the actual permitting start, meaning you need a permit to come to our convenience site um, starting in the middle of January to give people time to uh, get their permits in, call us if they didn't get one for whatever reason, uh, anything like that. Um, so, just, And then I'm happy to take any questions or concerns that you may have going, as I go forward with this um, that you would make sure I like to uh, have cleared up and answered before we make a recommendation. So what kind of media are we going to do to spread the word before we have the permit? Yes, sir, Mr. Boswell. Uh, I, and I've expressed to, to Mr. Evans that um, this is a big change for our citizens. Um, you know, so a lot of marketing is going to um, need to be done. That's why I wanted to come here tonight and, and start that process, get it on, on the minutes of, of the meeting. Um, I plan on running ads in, in newspapers. I plan on um, using our Facebook platform as much as possible, also reaching out to other organizations in our county and asking them to, to help me um, market this as much as possible. Any comments or suggestions? Item H, you'll see, I hope you mark the calendars. Uh, we've got our service awards that's coming up next week. Uh, so we always uh, enjoy being able to do uh, with our employees, and we thank you all for always uh, supporting that uh, every year. So that will be on the 14th uh, at 11 o'clock at, uh, at the Ag Center at Kingsburg. Uh, item I, regarding the TDA legislation change, you have in your packet um, the recommended language change for our Tourism Development Authority authorizing legislation, which would allow, um, which would allow for uh, funds to be designated that are collected within city limits of Rocky Mount, Edgecombe County side, and also um, Town of Tarboro, those hotels inside the Town of Tarboro for uh, projects within uh, the town. That does require a legislation change, and so you'll see that there is a. Uh, also, it's been submitted to Representative Shelley Willingham with a letter from the Chairman of the Tourism Development Authority uh, asking him if he would uh, be willing to uh, sponsor that legislation change. And so, 
that process has been sent to him. That process has not yet started. I just want to let you know where we are with that, and we're certainly keep you um, posted. Uh, the final thing I, I do want to share with you, uh, the complete count committee for the 2020 census. Um, uh, we have met, uh, they have met, uh, staff and I, Ms. Uh, Cynthia Jones and I have met with, uh, with them. Uh, they have discussed uh, different strategies. You'll see a draft of some of the strategies or their action plan um, in your agenda. It's still a draft. They have to meet again uh, this month they'll be meeting. Uh, to finalize that plan and timeline that's included. Uh, but also along with that, you'll see at the very end of uh, your agenda packet, there's a resolution included, and Commissioner Webb had um, recommended that we consider um, bringing before you a uh, resolution that would support um, you know, the promotion of the 2020 census and the work of the Complete Count Committee. And so there's a resolution in your packet for your consideration. Um, and I would uh, ask that you consider about the event tonight. Motion. Motion. Second. Okay. Any questions about the resolution? All in favor, let me know by the vote. Sign aye. Aye. All opposed? Hearing none, it is approved. Okay, at this time, is there anything from the commissioners? Hearing none, anything from our attorney? Hearing none, um, at this time, ladies and gentlemen, I think we're we going into a closed session to discuss economic development, legal matters, and personnel. I see one of our ex county commissioners come in. Reverend Walker, would you please raise your hand? Okay. Uh, is there a motion to go into an executive session to, dis to discuss these issues? Thank Questions? All in favor, let me know by the vote of sign aye. All opposed? Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be going to the closed session. Thank you for your attention.